Good morning. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to our live broadcast from Pentridge. I hope this morning the sound is working. Um, if you are hearing this loud and clear and everything is okay, uh, if you could just post a message, that would be great. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I hope the sound is working this morning and that you can hear us. All's well. Thank you, John. That's great. Yeah, we had for some reason there was no sound last week. It all. Uh... Oh dear. So it's a bit of a waste of time if there's no sound, isn't it? Oh, well done, Billy. Oh, no, Satan. Yeah, so sweet. So exciting. Well, it's never bring down the age. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the church is thriving. Oh, um, oh it, it, that's, that's enough chairs, is it? We've got enough chairs. Oh, you've got small, but brilliant. Oh, but really? set, uh, set never, come on. All oh, right. Hey, baby. Did will, will, will the other get another three? Are you willing? Yeah. Yeah. William. Is this a grand? It is a grand. It's, well, it, uh, it's, it's not the most. Yes, I, the only answer to that question I'll give is yes. Yes, yeah. it is. <laughs> it, right, is. That's the it, money is it is. It is a grand. Okay, hold, right. And okay. here is the... So Jane Goddard... Oh no, Jane Goddard's the next one. I will be the reader, if you'd like me to be the reader. What is there to read? Well, Bert would you like to read? I might have to... The only thing is, if you're going to read, you're going to have to come all the way around here. Ah and have the microphone pinned on you, otherwise people at home won't be able to well, hear you. If you'd rather do it yourself... Yeah, it's probably right. easier if I do it myself, it's less complicated. It, it sounds a good idea, doesn't <coughs> it, folks? Yes. Oh, well, that's a shame. <laughs> Here we go. So it is quite right. It is. I mean, it was me who was got it there. Mm -hmm. Oh, my head, it is. I can see him behind my head. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Yes, just make sure you're spread out reasonably because we are going to sing and that's part of the... Uh, oh, right. How can nice. you hear me at the back? I'm, what I'm in a bubble with you, so I'll come to you. Right. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, thank you. Right. Oh, that's all right. We've got some nice sinking good. I'll tell you what, I'll take that. So it's just... It's in the family, isn't it? She's inherited so it. Uh, <laughs> so volume is in the family. Oh, Purity is well, not. Yes. <laughs> Pure and good news. Has everybody got some music? No, I've got any. Oh, no, we'll just put that there because people need to use it before tomorrow. Mm. Good morning, Mary. I uh, hope the sound's okay. hope you can hear us this morning and all is well. Right. Oh, 
Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning to all of those people who are watching us online. Hopefully the sound is all good um, today and you can hear us loud and clear. I think everything is plugged in. Uh, here we are at uh, St. Rumble's Pentridge and we're outside today because it's not raining and uh, we're using one of the most resplendent tombs in the churchyard as our um, altar um, this morning and of course one of the joys of being outside is we can actually sing some hymns and on the back of your reading sheet you will find the hymns uh, for today. So let's begin with our first hymn. Uh, hopefully all the tech will be working. Dear Lord and Father of Mankind. Dear Lord and Father of mankind, forgive our foolish ways. Reclothe us in our rightful minds, in pure lives thy service find, in deeper reverence praise. In deeper reverence praise. In simple trust like those who heard beside the Syrian sea, the gracious calling of the Lord let us, like them, without a word, rise up and follow Thee. Rise up and follow Thee. O Sabbath rest by Galilee, O come of hills above. Where Jesus knelt to share with thee the silence of eternity, interpreted by love, interpreted by love. Drop thy still jewels of quietness Till all our striving cease Take from our souls the strain and stress And let our ordered lives confess The beauty of thy peace the beauty of thy peace. Breathe through the heat of our desire, thy coolness and thy balm. Let sense be dumb, let flesh retire, speak through the earthquake, wind and fire, O oh, still small voice of calm, O oh, still small voice of calm. Please be seated. <clears throat> well, good morning again and welcome to St. Rumbold's Pentridge for our prayer book, Holy Communion. And a special welcome again this morning to those who are watching us live uh, online. Let us pray. 
Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Here, <clears throat> our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Almighty God, whose kingdom is everlasting and power infinite, have mercy upon the whole church, and so rule the heart of thy chosen servant Elizabeth, our queen and governor, that she may above all things seek thy honour and glory, and that we and all her subjects may faithfully serve, honour and humbly obey her, in thee and for thee, according to thy blessed word and ordinance, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth ever one God, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. The Collect for the 13th Sunday of Trinity. Almighty God, who has called thy church to witness that thou wast in Christ reconciling the world to thyself, help us so to proclaim the good news of thy love, that all who hear it may be drawn upon thee through him who was lifted up on the cross and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So uh, I've printed out the three readings for today, but we're going to use uh, Romans and uh, the Gospel of Matthew today. <clears throat> so the first reading is from Romans chapter 13, verses 8 to 14. O oh, no man at anything, but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet, and if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbour, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent and the day is at hand, let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armour of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, nor in cham chambering, and wantonness, not in strife and envying. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make no provision for the flesh, to fulfil the lusts thereof. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So our psalm is uh, an excerpt from Psalm 119. This is uh, on the sheet that was sent out, so hopefully those at home can also uh, join in. We'll say the psalm through together. Teach me, O Lord, the way of thy statutes, and I shall keep it unto the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep thy law. Yea, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Make me to go in the path of thy commandments, for therein do I delight. Incline my heart unto thy testimonies, and do not controvert. Turn away my eyes from beholding vanity, and quicken thou me in thy way. 
establish thy word unto thy servant, who is devout to thy fear. Turn away my reproach which I fear, for thy judgments are good. Behold, I have longed after the precepts, quicken me in thy righteousness. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. <clears throat> Please stand for the Holy Gospel. Hear the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen man and a publican. Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth <coughs> shall be loosed in heaven. Again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that ye shall ask it, shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to thee, O Christ. <clears throat> we remain standing to say the creed together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day rose again according to the Scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth one another hath fulfilled the law. Love your neighbours as yourself. <clears throat> it seems today that we live in a more polarised and <clears throat> divided um, world than ever before, um, stoked up by not just social media, but <clears throat> I think the media uh, in general. And it's very interesting observing the run-up to the presidential elections uh, in the US and the very stark uh, divisions that there are in that country today. About 10 years ago, I was privileged enough to look after an Anglican church just outside Charleston in a little town called Pinopolis. Um, and, uh, it was a wonderful time uh, to be there. It was our first real experience of the US, but not as tourists, actually sort of really getting to know families and people. And it's interesting being in communication with them uh, today and 
how they really fear uh, for the divisions that are happening uh, in their country um, at the moment. It's also very interesting that politics and religion are very, very mixed up uh, in the US. I, I often joke in a sense that, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, here in England, we have the Church of England and it's very much set in its place of church and state. And of course, we have bishops uh, in the House of Lords um, and everything in a sense has its place. I sometimes think, though, uh, there can be a little bit of cronyism within all of that. Uh, it is a system that sort of works and rubs along together, though I do at times think that some of our bishops and senior leaders do need to speak out uh, a little more about the injustices uh, that happen uh, in our country. But of course, in the US, <coughs> getting the Christian vote, whatever that may be, uh, can be uh, the answer to winning the election. But of course, what is very alarming is that <coughs> um, the Christian vote can be all sorts of things. It seems to be, in a sense, the uh, vote that the politicians are particularly after is the conservative Christian vote. Uh, that's the one that seems to uh, push people over the finish line. So in a sense, it's a sadness that the <coughs> divisions within the family of God are stark and at front there. I don't know how many of you are fans of H.G. Wells, but I'm uh, a big fan of his. And my favourite <coughs> book of all is uh, The War of the Worlds. Now, of course, um, Wells had socialist and communist uh, leanings. Let's not uh, forget that. But uh, The War of the Worlds, a wonderful work of science fiction. Uh, in a sense, he was making a, a political comment about what would happen uh, in the situation if uh, the enemy was not man against man, but this outside force uh, coming in to uh, conquer uh, the human race. And I reread the book uh, recently. It was one of the books I picked up when uh, lockdown was sort of uh, in full kilter because I thought it'd be an interesting uh, book to read. And of course, one of the interesting things is if you read that book is that one of the things Wells doesn't really point out is in a sense the, any of the divisions that have come up uh, with the human race while the aliens are attacking. He, he does put across a, a, an almost sort of um, slightly sort of utopian idea of the human race suffering, that we're all suffering together and, uh, you know, one for all and all for one uh, type thing. Really, nowhere in the book do you find sort of petty squabbles uh, and fights. And of course, if you think about the situation that we're in today with a <coughs> global uh, pandemic, um, it has acted as, as a lens uh, and depending on where you focus your lens, you get to see slightly different things. Of course, there's been a lot of positive things. Uh, there's been wonderful support within local uh, communities. Um, the uh, system that's been set up for the villages around here where uh, people can get food and prescriptions. And I've uh, delivered a fair few here to, to Pentridge when the lockdown uh, was happening. There has indeed been that community spirit. There's also, in a sense, um, been uh, the eight o'clock clapping that um, stopped some time ago. But by just adjusting the focus on the lens a little bit more, and uh, apologies for using sort of uh, photographic terminology, but that's something I'm comfortable with. It's a thing called depth of field, what's in focus and what's out of focus as you adjust the lens. But if you adjust the lens a bit more, then sadly, it brings into uh, focus the selfishness <coughs> that we have seen also uh, during this pandemic. The, you know, I'm going to look after myself, mate, and then I'll worry about you. You know, people buying uh, 250 toilet rolls and all the pasta that they can <coughs> in the shops. Um, I went for a walk at Studland uh, the other day, and I'm always saddened as I walk along the beach and see all the plastic bottles and bits and pieces that are washed up. Of course, the new thing now is face masks were all discarded in the bushes and such like. And we've also seen the pictures of all the rubbish that was picked up at Durdle Door and Bournemouth and everything. 
So just by adjusting <coughs> that lens, uh, we get to see the good and the bad. And that's something that I think is really w missing in Wells's book. He focuses on, in a sense, the battle uh, against the aliens, but not the battle that is happening within humanity itself. And the pandemic that we're in at the moment in it has, in a sense, highlighted that probably more than anything. Now, that phrase <coughs> that is given to us both by Paul and in the gospel by Jesus, love your neighbour as yourself, is something that trips off the tongue very easily. But it's much harder to put into practice in reality. Now, it's also an interesting little um, footnote that uh, it's only Matthew's gospel uh, out of all of the gospels that mentions the word church. Um, it's mentioned uh, here. And of course, uh, <coughs> um, it's also mentioned by Paul. Now, of course, I don't believe that Jesus would have used that terminology because at the time when he was uh, preaching, he wasn't necessarily thinking about the foundation of a sort of system with bureaucracy and tears and such like. And of course, this gospel was written um, sometime after the death and resurrection of Jesus when the early church was forming. And clearly, um, it highlights the fact that there were divisions within the church family. So these guidance on how to deal with these particular divisions within that community are highlighted. Love your neighbour as you love yourself. I've often pondered that phrase and it's often made me think that actually <clears throat> the hardest part of that command, love your neighbour as yourself, is the as yourself bit. And I really do think that is the root of the difficulties that we face. Because I think until we can actually accept who we are, good and bad, and come to terms with it and in a sense um, challenge ourselves and our own behaviour, it's going to be very difficult to honestly love somebody else. So for example, uh, both my mother and grandmother <coughs> would say things like, it's why I applaud litter being <laughs> dropped everywhere. Because what they used to say to me was that, what does that say about that person who discards rubbish just all over the place? Does it really, are they really showing in a sense a love for themselves? Because they are, at the end of the day, destroying their own environment, nobody else's. <laughs> uh, and in a sense, when I sometimes see a car ahead of me and uh, there's a group of uh, people in it and you suddenly see the window opened and a McDonald's bag thrown out the window, there are, of course, as we're being broadcast live, many other fast food restaurants that deposit <laughs> uh, rubbish all over the place. <clears throat> uh, it says something about the people, I think, that do we really love ourselves? Because, uh, and I think that is the challenge for us as Christians and the challenge that we need to put to the world, in a sense, rather than a sort of tut-tut finger-wagging thing, is to honestly ask ourselves the question and challenge other people, um, what does it say about how you love and respect yourself if that is the way that you behave to others? And of course, in a sense, the command, um, in a sense, squares the circle because, you know, love your neighbour as you love yourself. So if that is how you're treating others, it shows maybe a sense, a lack of love and understanding uh, for yourself. And there can be a myriad of reasons uh, why people find themselves in that situation. One of the things in ordained ministry is uh, sometimes you only have to sit with somebody for half an hour or so and they may open up their soul and what you will find is sometimes deep wounds and hurts um, that go back an awfully long way and they can result in a sense in that inability to show that love to others. So part of this command is also in a sense the need for all of us to receive God's healing and love we must be open to let those wounds be healed. The final example I'll give is, and in a sense it's from myself, is I don't know about you, but 
the things that annoy me the most about other people when I sit down and think about it are actually the things I don't like about myself. <laughs> and that, in a sense, is an interesting thing to reflect on. That something or an action or something that I do, it, it prompts a response in me. And then when I start to sit and think about it, I think, well, actually, I do that. And how do I need to challenge my behaviour and focus on the love that Jesus has given us through his teaching and the way he lived his life? I find it very interesting in that uh, passage, the, the, um, the King James Version, the, 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 the language is much better, though I fear, uh, because it says, um, uh, treat, treat thee as a heathen uh, and a publican. Modern translations say, of course, of course, um, heathens or Gentiles and tax collectors. Um, I quite like publicans. <laughs> but of course, in a sense, that's not what the English is uh, uh, pointing to. Um, but of course, um, it's a bit of a contradiction in that passage because uh, Jesus sat with tax collectors and sinners, with heathens and uh, publicans. But in a sense, that was all part of that relational thing that was going on and that need to bring healing and understanding to all, even those, in a sense, who had been pushed out of society. So I think there is something else to this teaching here, a reminder that even if you've done, in a sense, um, what the sort of legalities suggest there, that you've got your two witnesses and you've been to see them on your own, then you've got your two witnesses and they haven't listened, and in a sense they're pushed out of the community, they should still be loved. They're, the door should always be open, in a sense, to, in a sense, re-establish that relationship. Amen. So, uh, just a few notices. Uh, just to say, next week at uh, 10 o'clock, we're going to try something a little bit uh, different up at Handley, hoping the weather's going to be like this. Uh, we're, instead of having a church service outdoors or indoors, uh, we're going to do a church walk and we're going to sort of be mini pilgrims who worship uh, on the way. And the idea is to meet outside St Mary's at, at 10 o'clock. We've worked out a sort of a, a circular walk that's about two miles. It's fairly gentle. Uh, and the idea is that as we walk, we will worship. We'll sing some hymns on the way. And at various points, we will stop uh, and say prayers and have acts of worship until we get to a... Uh, I think we're going to get to a point where we've got a good view of the sort of the community, Handley and such like, we'll worship there and then we'll come back to the church. Now I do appreciate for, for those who uh, find walking difficult and such like, uh, older folk, uh, it might not be for them. We will try and broadcast it live as we go round so people can join in with that. Uh, but if you do enjoy uh, a, a gentle stroll, of course you can bring your dogs and such like as well. Do you bring the dogs? Um, uh, please do uh, come and join us and maybe if it works there uh, folk here might want to try something like that too we can have a think about uh, that and I've also suggested um, bringing a, a flask of tea or coffee and your favourite sweet treat as well because we shall sit down and um, do that too so that will be um, next Sunday up at Handley providing the weather is reasonable if it is chucking it down with rain we will be inside um, the church 10 a.m. broadcast continues uh, normal. Uh, I've managed to fix the problem with my iMac. I haven't had a lot of luck with tech last week. I had computers going wrong. This went wrong last week and my electric hob uh, blew up on, <laughs> on Thursday and they're not coming to fix it for two weeks. So uh, uh, um, we've got camp stoves and things out. So there we go. The oven's still working. So, uh, 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 but the broadcast, 10 a.m. broadcasts will be... Uh, uh, Tuesday to Saturday um, next week. Thank you. And of course, Harvest Festival uh, for uh, Handley is at the end of the month and then Pentridge, uh, literally a month uh, today, and we're working on the venues um, for those um, at the time being. Thank you. So let's sing our next hymn, which is on the sheet, For the Healing of the Nations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lord, 
for a just and equal sharing of the things that earth affords to a life of love in action help us raise a pledge of word Lord, all things come of you, and of your own do we give you. Amen. Please be seated for our prayers. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church militant here in earth. Almighty and ever living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications, and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity and concord, and grant that all they that confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes and governors, and especially thy servant Elizabeth our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed, and grant unto her whole counsel and to all that are put in authority under her that they may truly and impartially minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. We pray especially today for all our schools, colleges and universities as the new academic term and year begin. We pray for our head teachers and school governors and all of those that are dealing with the difficulties of bringing our young people back to school and education. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests and deacons, praying for our bishops, Nicholas and Karen, and all of those who minister within this deanery and benefice, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness, all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech you of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, remembering especially at this time Melvin Sparks, beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbours and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. 
Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins, to all them that with heartly repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear what St Paul saith. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear what St John saith. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is very meet, right, and our bound duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same, Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thy only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered, a full perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. 
So I'll uh, come down to the front to um, give people um, communion. Uh, if you'd like to use the hand sanitizer beforehand, um, please do so. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord and Heavenly Father, we, thy humble servants, entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy and lively sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bound duty and service, not weighing our merits but pardoning our offences through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sitteth at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The peace of God which pathes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So just to say, our next service here at Pentridge will be in a fortnight's uh, time at 10 o'clock. It'll be a matin service um, outside if the weather is good, because of course we can sing if we're outside. Uh, if not, we will be inside the church for a um, said um, service. Um, so our final hymn is, uh, it's a, it's a, apology, it is a modern one, <laughs> but I hope you'll know it. It's uh, Make Me a Channel of Your Peace. Um, it's often ascribed to St Francis, though he didn't write it. It's a French uh, prayer. Um, and uh, September sees one of the uh, great Franciscan feast days, which is the 15th. Uh, which is the stigmata of St Francis. St Francis was 
uh, gifted with receiving uh, the wounds of Christ uh, on his hands and um, feet, and that's celebrated uh, in September. And also thinking of the uh, uh, reflection in the sermon today of loving our neighbour, uh, I think this hymn uh, picks it up particularly well. Make me a channel of your peace. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring your love. Where there is injury, your pardon, Lord. And where there's doubt, true faith in you. O Master, grant that I may never seek so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love with all my soul. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there's despair in life, let me bring hope. Where there is darkness, only light. And where there's sadness, ever joy. O Master, grant that I may never see. So much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love with all my soul. Make me a channel of your peace. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned, in giving to all men that we receive, and in dying that we're born to eternal life. So thank you for being uh, here this morning. It's been a glorious uh, sunny morning outside in uh, Pentridge Churchyard. And blessings to all of those uh, at home who have been watching live. I hope you have a fantastic Sunday. It's Liverpool Cathedral Organ.